Today we are covering the installation and setup of the Digi Edgeport device that is needed to download the Honeywell HTF 7000 series engines. Here we have a view of the box and associated cables that are needed to perform this task. One important note is that the USB port on the laptop that is to be used may need this setup done on each individual port and should be checked using the same procedures. The first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the Digi drivers and you can go to www.digi.com and pull up the edge port device under support and you can download the drivers here. If you need to download the drivers on another computer and just copy and bring them over to this computer, that'll work just fine. Whatever way you need to, to get these drivers loaded on this laptop. Once you have them loaded on the laptop, save them in a common area like this desktop icon and you'll double click on them. And then the edge port drivers window will open. You click setup. And then a DOS type screen will open showing the drivers being loaded and installed. This should do this automatically. And then once it's completed, the screen should go away on its own. If you have difficulties with this, you can reload it a second time to make sure they get in correctly. Once the drivers are loaded, go to your start menu and you can scroll down and here you'll see the Digi USB selection and then the edge port configuration utility program. You need to click on that, open it, and then you have the edge port property screen open up. Here you can verify that you have four comms hooked up. In this case, we do 8, 9, 10, 11. So we'll go straight into the setup. The first screen you want to do is configure. And here you see the four ports and the COM ports. And then you need to make sure that these are in sequence. In this one, they are 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever it happens to be on your computer. You select OK. Then you have port flags. Here we need to have RS-422 no terminating resistor. If for some reason you have one of these others selected, you need to change all four of these and make sure this is correct. Once you have them all changed, you click update. And then you move on to the next step. The next step is the advanced. You click on this advanced tab, and then you'll get this checkbox where you want to do the bottom two MS high speed hub fix, disable suspend, and in this lower section you want based on physical USB port and single device only. You need to make sure that these are checked, but do not click OK. You need to go back to general and then hit save configuration because if you would have hit OK, it would have took you out of the program. So hit save configuration, brings up the screen, save as, let the defaults here go, do not change anything, just hit save. And it says, would you like to overwrite? You say yes. And then you say OK. So now we're done with the setup and you say OK again and the screen's closed. Now, how do you verify if you have your ports and the box set up correctly? You go to EEI engine interface, open up the program. And if this use the default of basic mode, since we're not doing any initializations, say OK. And then in this case, we'll go to configure. COM port communications. And here we will see the COM ports that we want to use. We want to make sure we're on four COM ports. We want to make sure we're selected at eight as our beginning one, not three, because they need to be in sequence. So we'll go with eight. And it doesn't matter which aircraft you use. And I have eight, nine, 10, 11 here. If you want to verify if they're working, before you hook them up, you just make sure that the connector on the end of the harness, the loop back check is hooked up and then hit the tab here. It'll go back and check the testing and then now you know your comms are working and your cables are ready to go. At this point, you're ready to do a download 
on the HDF 7000 engine. 